Okay, so today we're going to be talking about um, Gavin, who's in kindergarten, six years old. He is, um, I did a Q, um, a QRI with him, which is a way to, it's called a um, qualitative reading inventory. It's a way that I'm able to know where he is in his reading abilities and where he is with um, his ability to understand, comprehend, and do all, the other, all of this other stuff. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is um, our word identification and isolation, which is a thing that I did first with him to see kind of where I will place him when I start um, the reading comprehension part with him. So I gave him this list of words that you can see here. The first one is 1 through 17, and the next one's 1 through 20. And I kept track of all of the words that he got correct and all of the words that he didn't get correct. And I also kept track of the his ability to identify them automatically and his ability to I just identify them either through sounding out or he took a few um, extra seconds, took a little bit longer to figure them out. So on the first list, as you can see, we have um, he only missed one word, which was the word go, I believe. And um, and so that was really good. So what I did down here at the bottom here is I first calculated how many words that he got um, automatic, which was seven, which was 12 out of 17, which is good. It equal to 70%. And then I took the um, amount of how many he identified, which is four out of 17, which is 23%. And then the total, because even though we have two sections where we know what comes automatic and then what comes, um, and then what he can identify, we just separate those so that we're able to see that like, okay, maybe with the word um, do, we could you still put that in his high frequency words that he's learning or put that in um, his sight words so that he's really able to recognize it immediately. Um, that, so that's why we do those two different things. But what really matters is the total number he got correct, which was 16 out of 17, leading him to a 91%. This shows me that he's able to do all of the, this, these types of words independently. So because he did this independently, and this was um, the pre-primer one set, I went ahead and moved him to the pre-primer two, two and three set. And here he had a little bit more um, difficulty, but just a little bit, not too much. So there was 20 words, and he was able to um, correctly, um, automatically identify nine out, of, nine out of those 20. And then he was able to identify five out of 20 on top of that. So that gave him a total of 14 words out of 20, leaving him at a 70% which means that that's his instructional level. And instructional level is where I want to be at with him because I want to be able to explain, or I want to be able to teach him more of these words so that he's able to eventually be at that independent level with this word list as well. Once we get to a frustrational level, which is down here, which would have been below 14, that's when I need to bump him back and come back to this um, pre-primer one set and work on more words that, are, that would fall under here. Um, because I don't want him to get frustrated and discouraged, especially being in kindergarten. It can happen really easily. So I just want to make sure. So when I did, went ahead and did this, I went ahead and put his information into this um, data chart down here with the words he got right, the number he got automatically, and then the total number that he, he got so that I could keep this in his um, chart with, and with all of his data. Now, based off of that, since this was an instructional level for the pre-primer um, word list for sets two and three, I wanted to go ahead and just start him at, at a pre-primer one for the reading. And that's where we got to this. So the first story we read was I Can See, and it's a very simple story. Um, a lot of the, the, it's got pictures to go with it. It's very predictable. So I can jump, see me jump. I can hop, see me haul. Um, I can run, see me run. And I went ahead and I did a picture walk with him, which I went and showed him the pictures. Um, to before just so that he could have an idea of what was coming. I didn't want him to be thrown off. And before I even did any of that, I did concept questions with him, which is shown here. And these concept questions are really important because it shows us whether he's going to be familiar with uh, with the ideas in the story. So you, I asked him these four questions, and they want you to score a 55 or a, uh, um, above to show that you are familiar with the story. If you score below a 55, it means that that story is probably not a good um, idea for them because they might not know, they don't understand the concepts behind it. And in kindergarten, that can be very difficult. So we went ahead and I did this, and he scored really well. He got a 91% with the familiar, um, his ability to familiarize himself with the story. So I went ahead and... Um, 
had him read the story to me. And he, right here I did a running record, which this is um, a way for me to track the number of words and add in these things called miscues, which is um, parts of the story where he um, lacked or where he wasn't able to um, identify words or he repeated words or he um, added a word. So that's where all of this comes into. So here he admitted the word lunch in the sentence and that was his only miscue. Every other word he got right. Hop, he um, he got it right. It took him a little bit longer to get that one. It wasn't as automatic. So I went ahead and put a line just next to it so I knew. So then over here what I did is I went ahead and totaled the number of miscues. So the number of mistakes was one and the number of mistakes that would change the meaning of the test. Um, texts are the actual ones that we um, we really um, look at. So we want to make sure because him opting out lunch could change the meaning of whether that child was eating lunch or dinner. So because of that we come over here and you get what you do is some math honestly and you subtract the number of total words minus the number of words that he omitted which was that one lunch and then you divide that by each other and you get um, he got a 97% on this, which is really good. Um, it says that if they're at a 97% um, or below, that is their instructional level. Now, based on that and knowing him and how well he did on the word list is when I went ahead and um, I, wanted, I wanted to try another one with him. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, he was able to retell the whole entire story to me word for word, which was great, which is a good comprehension strategy, so he got that right. And when I asked him all of his comprehension, um, his comprehension questions, he was able to answer them correctly as well. So in the question, an, an example for one of the questions could be, um, what can the girl at the beginning of the story do? And he explicitly told me, jump. So... That was good. So we, so he, um, out on the comprehension part of that, uh, of that uh, story, he got a total of five out of five, which is at an independent level. So since he, he got an instructional level for reading the the passage and an independent level for um, comprehension, I just went ahead and moved him up to this. I did a second um, story for the pre uh, um, primer level one, and so that's where I came in. So I went ahead and did that. And when I looked at that um, story, once again, that story was called I See, and um, it was talking about things that the girl um, sees. I see a frog on a log. I see an ant on a plant. So those, those types of questions. So the concept questions to make sure he understood what was the concepts in the story were. I scored an 88 on them. That's perfect. The running record he did well. He missed. He had a total of three mistakes um, throughout it. He said "an" instead of "a" one time for "doing." He couldn't identify that word, so he just kind of said like "da da da da" and like left it just like "da jig," um, which was fine. So with all of those, he was able to score on this one a ninety-eight percent accuracy, which was really good. We saw a little bit of confusion down here with the retelling of the story. So he missed two of those, which um, was a little, I think he swapped them. So he said he did the pig with a jig before and then he did the duck in a truck. So um, I kept note of that. And then I went ahead to the comprehension questions again. And once again, he scored a five out of five on them. So based on all of this um, data, five out of five on comprehension is at an independent level. And the number of miscues he got was a 98%, which is above that 97, which shows me that this is an independent level as well. So based on that, I decided to move him up to a pre-primer 2 passage. Um, when I did that, he did really well. <laughs> but it, he um, ended up at an instructional level for both points of this. So once again, cause of questions did really good. Went down a little bit. It got down to a 77, but it's still above a 55%. So he's he's on the right track. He was perfect, golden. Then I did my um, running record. He made some um, mistakes here and there, which is fine. He made a total of four um, miscues with only two of them really changing the meaning of the passage, which those are the ones that we really want to focus on. Um, with that in mind, since he missed those two, he got a 95%. That is right at um, instructional level. So uh, based on that, um, 
based on that, I was getting to know um, exactly what he was doing. He did fine. Um, retelling the story, he had a few mistakes. I put down here that he lost it towards the end, which shows me that the story is a little long for him. And that he, um, he by the end of it, he wasn't really paying attention to what was happening in the story. So I just put that, um, lost it towards the end. So that was to keep in mind. And then when I went ahead and asked him the comprehension questions, he missed one. Here. Um, the question was, what can the girl work with just like mom? And the option for answers was numbers. And then, um, he ended up saying words, which was, which is fine. Um, so he missed a total of two, or he missed a total of one question leading him to the instructional level of a four. Based on this being an instructional level of four, and based on this information being an instructional level of four, I feel like it's best for me now to stop him there, and let's keep him out of um, pre-primer two, and start working on passages there to um, help with comprehension, and to help with um, word identification and stories, and using our different strategies to really um, understand the passage, being able to retell the story um, in the sequence of orders. But honestly, he's on the right level. Because after pre-primer 2, there's pre-primer 3, and then you're on first grade. So, because this um, specific test that I um, gave him was solely based, it, it starts at first grade level. So, he's in kindergarten, and he's honestly, he's on a amazing path to um, being either on first grade level at a kindergarten level or um, being golden to go into first grade and be able to do um, the, the first instructional that's not a pre-primer um, passage. So based on that, he is great. Thank you.